Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are going to check out another TNG figure, as this time we've got the Triceratops. And yes, this is yet another figure that I was lucky enough to acquire thanks to my good friend Dino Mike Mac, because again, these still have not begun showing up on AliExpress or anywhere like that. I'm not sure what's going on with them, but... I am happy to have this one into my collection now because it's another one that I was really quite interested in. It's also one that was kind of like the Plesiosaur and the Overraptor where we didn't see a whole lot about them with the first run of figures that they kind of unveiled on us. There was a whole bunch of figures that just popped up randomly on Lana Time Shop and that was probably the first place I think a lot of us had learned of the TNG brand. And they did not have this one up there. There was like a whole bunch like the Giganotosaurus and T-Rex, both of which I don't have yet. But uh, there was a whole bunch of stuff there that was really cool, but this one, along with a few others, were missing. So definitely psyched to actually have a good chance to get a good look at this Triceratops. You can see the box art pretty much is your standard when it comes to these figures. You've got Cretaceous up here. You've got Triceratops TNG uh, brand name there, and then, of course, the Triceratops itself. And you're going to find pretty much the same thing as you move through. On the side, you do have a little information on Triceratops, and they always do this. They always give you a little information on the species some information of course down here on the bottom and then again basically a repeat of everything here on both sides so let's pop this box open and check out our tng triceratops and here is the triceratops and just as i expected it's actually really quite nice looking especially the paint job the sculpt looks very good i will say that but that paint job is extraordinarily beautiful They've done a great job of applying numerous different tones of color in a very nice naturalistic and realistic way. And uh, again, they've done a good job as far as choosing the tones of color for this one and applying a lot of paintwork to it so it has a really realistic look, but it's not overly flashy. You know, it's basically what I would expect a Triceratops to look like. So honestly, again, first impressions here, it is really well done. The eyes specifically are honestly popping there, really jumping out at me. But I'm impressed with just how much color variation they actually have on this figure. I mean, there's not a whole lot, but you can see they put a lot of work into it. You know, you've got various tones of color showing up here and there. And especially in the face, you can see like they've done a good job of adding in quite a bit of various tones of color up there as well to give it a really, really beautiful appearance. So definitely happy with this one straight off the bat. Really quite impressive. So as always, let's jump to a closer look at it and check it out from there. So starting up here at the head sculpt, you can see the skin texture. Everything as far as the fine detail goes looks really good. You've got quite a bit of variation as far as the skin texture goes. Like you have some larger scales down here. Some variation as far as the appearance of the skin texture and scale detail as you move up. Again, different sizes and especially as you move up into the frill. But you can also see like skin wrinkles and stuff and skin uh, stretching, especially in the mouth. The mouth of the Triceratops is wide open, so you kind of would expect to see some sort of movement there in the mouth area. On the inside of the mouth, you can see everything is sculpted really nicely. We have the teeth in there. They're also painted. Nice uh, realistic tone of color in there as well. And there you go, you can get a look at the inside of the mouth and the upper side. Really impressive, really well done. And considering how small those teeth are, you know, it's even more impressive how nice they actually look in there as far as the paintwork. You can also take notice to a gloss coat there on the inside of the mouth. We've got the nostrils sculpted out as well as a very nice looking beak. I like that the beak kind of transitions to a lighter tone as you lead out toward the tip of the beak. Lots of cracks and crevices added within the beak to add some nice realism there. Same deal for the horns as you move up. I like that we have kind of like a darker tone that gradually transitions to a lighter tone. And you see pretty much the same thing for these horns, but it actually ends up you know, transitioning back to a darker tone as you reach the tips. But they've also added a nice kind of dark wash to the majority of that area to kind of highlight all of those cracks and crevices and make them stand out in a very nice, very realistic way. Very smooth transitions as well. And then as I was saying before, how nice the eye looks and how nice it was popping. You can see we've got a white, then a brown, then a black for the pupil. Nice gloss coat. The Triceratops looks very alert, I will say that, and that kind of goes along with the positioning of the body as well as the positioning of the mouth. You can see the mouth is wide open, so it looks like maybe a Tyrannosaur or something that's kind of worrying the Triceratops may be approaching and uh, 
that kind of is what's going on here definitely kind of expressing a little bit of a look of fear i think and you can see again within the face you've got all sorts of variation of colors with different variations of grays you can see slightly different tones darker especially there around the eye area and then up toward the mouth and then lighter tones of grays as well as a really nice kind of a uh, khaki or light brown wash that's been applied in between all of the cracks and crevices of the skin texture making the detail look super realistic but at the same time giving the triceratops almost a little bit of a dirty look you can see again more of that sort of similar tone maybe slightly different but it kind of looks like it might be the same tone down here as we lead to the underside you can see again that's kind of the coloration of the underside of the triceratops as you lead up into the frill you can see we have a darker tone leading down a few different areas to highlight the scoots moving down those areas and then against more of those variations of lighter browns and stuff but you can see they've allowed like the grayish tones to creep through the lighter browns up here but then down here the lighter browns to creep through the grayish tones so they've kind of flip-flopped as far as the way that they painted this in those areas and you can also see again that we have that darker tone running around the outer edge of the frill everything looks really really nice as far as that paint work goes and you can see again that we've got the spikes here around the frill painted out very nicely the dinosaur does have a turn to the neck you can see it's turning to its right so you can kind of see how the skin is wrinkling there in the neck region as you move back into the body of the triceratops you start to see that they've applied a black dry brushing and that shows up in quite a few areas and you can see kind of leading down from the shoulder which is protruding from the skin right there into the front leg there you can see that they've added that nice black dry brushing it's not everywhere it's just kind of sporadic as far as the way that they've applied it which i also like and then you can see that the foot is lifting up off of the ground maybe again kicking dirt or something to sort of show off a defensive posture and that maybe again following with that sort of face of fear that we have going on with the triceratops so i do like that as well pretty nice looking foot sculpt there for the triceratops nice bend in the wrist and uh, as we move back up, you can see some more skin detail here with the skin stretching off of the stomach. Same deal for the rear leg right there. Some wrinkling as you move up. You have more of that light brownish tone, but you can even see a slightly different tone of brown right there. So again, uh, TNG always going above and beyond to give us quite a bit of color variation for our figures. As you move up, you continue to have these large scales moving through. You can see that dry brushing of the blackish tone runs over the majority of the top part of the Triceratops. You can see some scoots kind of following along the spinal column. And they've allowed, again, that light brown to sort of creep through all of those black you know scales up here and that looks really cool i love how they've done that very nicely highlighting all of that scale detail you can also see the hip bone right there kind of like some scoot like scales leading over the hip bone as well and then as you move down nice muscle definition within the thigh but it's not overly defined where it looks you know uh not so realistic it actually looks really quite nice big bulging calf muscle as well you've got the kneecap right there again we have that dry brushing with the black and then the kind of light brown creeping through and then you move down you've got a pretty nice looking rear foot sculpt as well the nails are painted with a light gray so you can kind of see a little difference from the darker tone of the foot and then as you move back out you can see again we've got quite a bit of variation of color going on as we lead out into the tail again with all the variations of grays browns as well as the black dry brushing up here and then you can see there's a very nice curve to the tail as you lead out and uh, that also looks really quite nice as you lead along the underside this as well looks really good down here you can kind of make out a cloaca right there and then again a big pudgy belly here for our triceratops as we move through and you can see again all the lighter variations of color here you can also see some more of that slightly uh, alternate tone of color almost looks like a little purplish right there on the back of the leg same deal for that one so that's an interesting color choice down there the opposing side's not going to look too much different you can see the triceratops again like i said has its head facing away from us so it's kind of uh, stretching the skin but you can also see like some tensing right there in the neck as well as some skin wrinkles and skin folds really really nice fine detail on this triceratops the eye paint also looks really good over here again that gloss coat making it shine very nicely the big difference that you're going to see on this side aside from the fact that the head's facing away from us is again the positioning of the legs you can see the legs are held closer together on this side compared to what we saw on the initial side and everything again looks really good especially when you look at like the musculature of the legs and everything it looks really nice here on this side you can see the elbow the knee present on both the front and back legs really nice looking foot sculpts and again you can see how the skin scrunching and 
bunching up there in the stomach region because both legs are pressing into it. You can also see how it's kind of like pushing the gut of the Triceratops and sort of extending it, definitely showing that this is a pretty well-fed, very healthy Triceratops. You've got the hip bone up here again, and you can see the detailing there for the back of the frill, also sporting again some more of those brownish tones and everything back there. And then again, the nice curve for the tail as you lead out. So that's actually a really nice looking Triceratops. The paint job might be one of my favorites from this line so far, not because of like the patterning or the, you know, color design. It's just the way it's been applied and how naturalistic it looks. I really am quite the big fan of the paint scheme and paint application of this Triceratops. But overall, I feel like it's a really, really well done Triceratops. As far as a size goes for a length from the tail, to the beak you're looking at about a little under nine and a half inches so not quite at nine and a half or around 24 centimeters if we actually go to the horn up here it's actually a little over if we go to the opposing horn a little over nine and a half inches or around 24 and a half centimeters. And then for a height, the highest point would probably be the top of the frill, a little over four inches or 10 centimeters, maybe approaching 10 and a half centimeters, but not quite there. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our TNG Triceratops. And you can see it does have a pretty good size to it, honestly. Definitely very nicely sized. I would say it's probably pretty similar in size to the Papo Triceratops, and uh, that's kind of a continuing trend with TNG, where you sort of see them taking inspiration from other companies' work, and uh, I definitely feel like they may have taken some inspiration from the Papo Triceratops with this one. Maybe a little bit, not a whole lot. I could definitely see a lot of difference. Similar as far as like the coloration sort of goes. But for a size comparison to show that off, there is the Papo and TNG Triceratops next to each other. And I think it's very interesting how you can kind of see sort of similarities. But obviously the TNG version has a lot of TNG's personal charm. But I like that TNG's almost giving us like figures dedicated to old older releases because you kind of saw that with their Spinosaurus and uh, same deal here with this Triceratops, sort of the same thing with the Oviraptor, where you can see some inspiration within them. But at the same time, I mean, there's only so many times you can remake a species without them looking similar to other companies because, you know, it's just only so many times you can pose and color a dinosaur without it looking similar. But I think they did a very good job on their Triceratops, honestly. I would say the paint application and uh, general appearance is actually a lot nicer on the TNG version compared to the Papo version. Then we've got a comparison here with the Mojo Fun version of the Triceratops, if you happen to have that figure in your collection. As well as the Schleich Diabloceratops, again another Ceratopsian comparison that this is a very popular Schleich figure, honestly, probably one of the best figures they've ever had, so one that many people probably own. We've also got a comparison with the Batat version of Triceratops, if you happen to have that one as well in your collection. And then for a how long good comparison, we've got the Nasuto Ceratops, because again it's another Ceratopsian, but it's also a recent one that many people were a big fan of, myself included, so I felt like that would be a good one to bring in for a comparison next to our TNG Triceratops. Then for an actual TNG comparison, we have the Woolly Mammoth, again, a super popular figure from TNG, maybe the uh, most popular overall, so far anyway, as well as the TNG Carnotaurus here next to the Triceratops for another comparison. There is also the Toyway Triceratops, if you have that one in your collection. And then we've got your standard sized Mattel Triceratops next to the TNG version, just to hammer out one final comparison. So this brand new TNG Triceratops is actually really quite beautiful. And, you know, for the most part, when it comes to the TNG line, I think that's something that can be said overall. The only figure I think I was even remotely let down by so far was their Velociraptor. And even that one wasn't half bad. It just wasn't up to the standards that I've come to expect from TNG. And this Triceratops definitely is up to those standards, maybe even has exceeded them, because I think they've done a very good job 
on everything when it comes to this figure. The sculpt is really well done, very highly detailed as always, has a really nice pose to it, and I like the fact that it kind of expresses so much life, again with the mouth being open, obviously letting out some form of a vocalization, the eyes kind of widened, kind of showing a little bit of fear, and uh, just sort of giving me the visual, in my opinion, of a Triceratops maybe about to defend itself against some sort of a Tyrannosaur or something like that. The paint job as well is really well done. There's a lot of variation of color to it. They've done a good job of transitioning the colors smoothly. They've also done a great job of applying washes and dry brushing techniques to highlight the paint as well as you possibly can for something like this. And again, adding just a lot of depth and realism to the paint, making it look a lot more like a living animal rather than a figure that's been painted up in a factory. And I will say, again, the paint jobs and paintwork of the TNG brand, considering these figures figures are painted in a factory is very impressive you know very well done lots of added bits of realism especially when you look at the gloss coat on the eyes the gloss coat on the inside of the mouth everything overall looks great on this figure so yet another massive recommendation from me if you do have the opportunity to grab this tng triceratops i definitely recommend doing so unfortunately as i said my good friend dino mike max scored this from a store in hong kong i don't know exactly where you can purchase this one here in the united states or anywhere else so if i do find somewhere possible i will absolutely update the link in the description to add a link to purchase it but until then if you have to run into it again definitely pick it up because it is a really really nice release and of course let me know in the comments section what you guys think of it and also like and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching